Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, and freaks of nature of all ages. My name is Brian Bad Hippie Jackson, and welcome back to Let's Build. And this is going to be our second episode in building a multiplayer map. And I have gone ahead and decided that we're not going to do uh, free-for-all deathmatch, team deathmatch, and capture the flag using the same map. What we're going to do in, with this build is just concentrate on the deathmatch, the free-for-all deathmatch, and the team deathmatch, and then we will bring in a different map uh, later on, which we can use for capture the flag. Um, and we'll just build them separately because there are different things that are involved in them. And although we can set up a singular map to support all three, if you're playing a uh, deathmatch, if you're playing deathmatch on a map that is also set up for capture the flag, then you're going to end up seeing your flag bases just sitting out wherever the flag is supposed to be, but there's not going to be a flag on it. It's not going to interact. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to be something that's there that doesn't need to be there. And instead of having that inconsistency, I decided to go ahead and just do it individually. Okay, so what we're going to do in this episode here is I am not going to worry with textures at all yet. I am just going to show you how to get your model into UDK. So if you remember last time we, we got our Indust map from SketchUp, we exported it as a DAE file, we imported that DAE file into Blender, then we exported that as an FBX. So we're just going to select Content, we're going to hit Import, we're going to go to our Documents, Game and Animation, SketchUp, and there is the Indust map that we exported from Blender as an FBX file. So we're going to click Open. Now, if you remember, at the last part of that video, when we were exporting the FBX, we looked at the options on the left, even though my mind, in the hurry that it was, said that those options were on the right, because when my ADHD brain gets in a hurry, I mistake my right from my left sometimes. You've probably noticed that in other videos we went down to the bottom and we touched on smoothing groups and we smoothed our edges and I will show you why we did that here in a second but we're going to change this package and we're going to make this call it multi underscore indust so each map that we do we're going to put into an individual folder um, so that we can keep things separated and our folders don't get overwhelmed or become too large. Now in the grouping we are going to call that map because we're importing a map we're going to leave the name exactly the way it is. We want to import this as a static mesh we want to combine meshes because as we saw in uh, Blender there was something bet somewhere between the neighborhood of five to six hundred individual pieces to this model and many of them are tiny 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 and we don't want to have to piece together all those individual pieces like a puzzle we just want to bring it in as one mesh so we will combine meshes to make it one model and then we're going to go ahead and leave import materials and create groups automatically checked okay <clears throat> um, and that way it's what it's going to do is it's going to bring in the model the same way it looked in blender with just flat colors but it's going to go ahead and create all of the individual texture groups that we need and don't worry it's not going to be 500 of them it's only going to be something like 20 21 of them and so it's much easier to texture the the model in UDK than it is to texture the model in blender that's why I did it that way so if we click OK then it's going to go ahead and compile our shaders and it's this this will take a couple of minutes because there are quite a few shaders that need to be compiled there we go and we saw that we got no warnings about smoothing groups. Now, if we had not smoothed those edges in Blender, it would have given us a warning that we don't have smoothing groups on the model 
and also once we brought that model into a map every time we try to build lighting it will give us a warning that our static mesh has um, um, so, what, uh, invalid lighting or something of that nature but we, we'd get a big ass warning about that so we're gonna click on that we're gonna right click and we're gonna click save and we're just going to save it into this folder. Now I have already gone through and done this in its entirety one time and then I 86 all of the work I did uh, so that we could start from scratch but I went ahead and did it all the way through one time to make sure double check myself and make sure that I knew what the hell I was doing because I hate watching people screw up things in the middle of a tutorial going why isn't it working run through it one time off camera to make sure you know what you're doing so that when you get on camera you don't make those mistakes you know pretty simple concept so we're gonna fully load this now and we're gonna drop it open and we're gonna save it again just because it moved it into all right and there we have our map and there we have our materials but we don't have any textures all these materials are simply colors um, and on our map if we double click that we will see that we have 21 material elements um, so what we're, what I'm going to do is just drop every one of these open because they need to be open for materials to come in and it's not that I need them open right now we haven't converted our textures into materials yet uh, just to let you know that this is what we're going to be doing because when you start zooming in on areas in here like this and so forth then what you're going to get is uh, when you click on a certain item it will highlight just like that where that texture is supposed to be and that's how we'll know what we need to put and where and how okay uh, so we'll go ahead and close that out real quick. no we're gonna open that up again now what we want to do is because we've got one large model like this building individual colliders for this map is going to be a major major uber large pain in the ever loving keister and we don't want an uber pain in the ever loving keister we we want to simplify that process so we're going to go all the way down here to where we got these three tick boxes simple line box collision simple line or simple box collision simple line collision and simple rigid body collision and we're going to untick those and that way UDK is automatically going to build all of our detailed colliders for this map okay now we're going to drag now before we drag that in we're going to get rid of this box and we're going to get rid of this floor now we're going to drag this in close that down and we're going to come over here we're going to grab our draw scale because one is going to be too large actually let me go ahead and show you that one is going to be too large we're going to pull that down about there now we're also going to have to drop our kill z because as you see our kill z is above our floor and if we go down uh, go downstairs in any shape form or fashion then that kill z is going to do us in absolutely positively immediately and we don't need that crap happening okay so we're going to take that back to lined we're going to grab this player start we're going to go right there where it is and we're going to hit F4 on the player start and because that is a default player start from a different map the yaw is already automatically set to 112.5 depending on what map you bring in depends on how the yaw has been changed I always reset the yaw to zero because we don't really need it now we're going to drag that out and actually what we want to do is put it in an area uh, let's bring it over here bring it right over there by one of the doors go to actor and as you can see it's underneath the map so we're gonna grab that we're gonna pull it up above the map we're gonna to go to unlit real quick because that lighting is messing with us and then we're gonna pull it back down until we get a bad size warning and then we're just gonna raise it up one tick at a time until the bad size warning goes away and then we know that we're set about properly and that works good there uh, now we're gonna go ahead and zoom the overhead all the way out and we're going to select our um, light mass importance volume um, 
because light mass importance is important. We're also going to bring this down. So we're going to bring the light mass importance volume down to about there. So we know that the entirety of the map, both uh, in height, is encompassed. Then we're going to grab our non-uniform scale and we're going to scale it out until it encompasses the entirety of the map in the y-axis. Move that a little bit. Then we're going to grab non-uniform scale again and drag that out until we encompass the entirety of the map in the x-axis. So now we have the entirety of the map in both the x, y, and z axis encompassed within our light mass importance volume and our light build is going to work much better. So now we're going to go up to view. We're going to click on world properties. We're not going to tick off no default inventory for player because we do want guns in this. We're just going to work with the UDK defaults until we build our custom weapons, but we're going to set the kill Z to about a negative 2,000 just to make sure that we don't actually accidentally kill ourselves if we go downstairs or something. Now we're going to set the default game type. Now usually we've been using UT game, but since we're building a deathmatch here, we're going to set the default game type to deathmatch. We're going to set the UT game to deathmatch and then we're going to touch on game types supported on this map. Now you can support multiple game types on the same map. Right now it will only support deathmatch so we're going to click this button twice, the little uh, cross. In the first one we're going to go ahead and select UT deathmatch and in the second one we're going to go down and select UT team game. So now we have a free-for-all deathmatch and a team deathmatch. And if we want to test out the team deathmatch, when we hit the play button up here, all we have to do is switch game type to Pi to UT team game, and that will automatically make the Pi or the play in editor a team deathmatch instead of a regular deathmatch. Okay, so now with that done, um, we can actually go ahead and build all and I will pause the recording while we build all because we know that lighting takes a while sometimes. Okay, and there we go and of course it's going to tell us maps not built with production lighting and static mesh, mesh has invalid light mass coordinates but you know actually it's not going to come out too bad and if we hit play then even though our lighting is about ready to blind us, we can still run around this map. All the colliders have been made. The problem we're looking at is that um, everything is much too large. These barrels are too big. Um, these doorways are much too large. These boxes are too large. Um, so that's why earlier, let's go ahead and select that. I came down here to the draw scale. What we're going to need to do is set that draw scale to 0.6. I don't need discord there. 0.6. That is going to reduce the size of our map. All right. And now we need to figure out where the hell our player start point is. So let's click on that. Go to scene. Click player start and then go to actor, there's our player start way the hell over there. All right, so it reduced the size of the map to what we need, but it also moved our player start way out of the way of where we need it. So let's go ahead and pull that back over there. Go to actor again. We're much too high in the air, so we're just going to do the same thing we did earlier, and we're going to bring it down until we get our bad size warning, and then we're going to bring it up one or two ticks at a time until the bad size warning goes away. Now we're going to build uh, lighting, build all because we're going to need to rebuild our paths. All right, there we go. Um, now also, as we go along in this build, um, when we get into doing custom weapons, the, the gentleman that made these maps for uh, the Google Warehouse for Google SketchUp is a gentleman by the name of Sergio Pavroni. Um, all you got to do is go to the Google Warehouse and search Sergio Pavroni and you can find his stuff. But to go along with um, the maps, the Counter-Strike based maps that he made, he also made props. 
uh, vehicles and weapons. So when we get into doing custom weapons where we are actually going to be importing as a skeletal mesh with animation on it for, for weapons use, we're going to be using the same weapons that Sergio Pavroni used are, are built to go specifically with these maps so that everything is consistent. So let's go ahead and hit play again, give it another test run, and now we can see that the map is a bit smaller. We can actually get up on our boxes and barrels. Uh, the tires, we don't have to jump over those, we can just walk over them. Um, the doors are not nearly as huge. Uh, and that everything just looks a little bit better, although it is way too bright because, you know, we got a midday map and uh, the lighting is just overpowering in some areas because of the way uh, that this thing is textured. And there was a light bar on this wall, um, and I think I might have accidentally deleted it and didn't even realize it, but that's okay. We can go ahead and bring in uh, Mr. Pavroni's lights that he built for props uh, to replace some of the lighting that we no longer have. And this area back here where we got rid of that collider. And that is the basics on how to bring in a model or a map from Google SketchUp to be used in UDK as a static mesh. We will get into skeletal meshes when we build our custom weapons uh, for use in this map. So please do not forget to check the links in the description below for the Disabled American Veterans and the Wounded Warriors Project. Let's please help support our veterans. Oh, I didn't even, you know what? Yeah, it'll work right there. Let's call ahead and call this one in dust underscore one. Just the same same name. And so we'll put that in the bad hippie maps in dust one. There we go. If you like the video, then hit the like button, subscribe, and share. Tell your friends and family to hit the like button, subscribe, and share. Please don't forget to leave a comment. They are always welcome, good, bad, or somewhere in between. Thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate your time, your support, your encouragement. You guys are amazing. And until next time, this is Brian Bad Hippie Jackson saying peace, love, clean underwear, and happy gaming.